Hello, my name is Evan Freiberger, and today we're going to be going over the nor'easter that is going to be happening in the northeast. It's going to be kind of a quick overview going over the latest data, so let's get into it. All right, so as you can see here, we have a low pressure system right here and also a little low pressure system off the coast of the United States. These two are eventually going to interact with each other as this one moves off to the north and east and this one moves off to the north. Eventually, this system is going to come around like this, and the other system is going to come around like this, causing this system to kind of do this kind of pattern here. As you can see, it's going to kind of hang around for a little bit and then curve back into the east coast and then eventually curve back out. This is what we call the Fujiwara effect, and this is going to cause a little bit more of increased snowfall than what you would normally get from a system just off the coast of New England. Putting this in motion, you can see how these systems are acting right now. Definitely can see that cooler air coming in from the north around this first low pressure system moving through the Ohio Valley. And then you can see this other system is slowly gaining strength off of the east coast. Next, we're going to look at the temperatures with the NAM 3K here. These are the current temperatures around the United States right now. And as you can see, lots of cool air moving in on the backside that will eventually actually even move down into the southeast and also up into the northeast and around the east coast. You can really see this warm moisture that's going to be working with this other system out in the middle of the ocean here to really give it some strength as it interacts with the AOC or the Atlantic overturning current. Moving this model forward to about 9 p.m. tonight, you can see that warm air really starting to swirl off the coast here and those cooler temperatures really work into the Ohio Valley. Going all the way into 1 a.m., you can see those temperatures starting to plummet down into the southeast as we could see below freezing temperatures here in the northern Alabama, Georgia, and Mississippi area. Continuing to push this forward, you can see that warm-up happens the next day, but it really holds on even with the daytime heating here in the northern parts of the southeast. Moving this forward just a little bit further. Wow. You can see that that, that warm air has interacted uh, with this colder air coming from the Ohio Valley, and now we have mainly a cold core low pressure system off of the east coast near New England, and even in the temperature data, you can see this low pressure really strengthening and swirling just off of the coast of Massachusetts. Looking down at the southeast, you can see those cold temperatures return, and most of the southeast, even down into Florida, is going to be experiencing some temperatures in the 40s and into the 30s up here in the northern parts. Pushing this all the way through, you can see that eventually things start to warm up here in the southeast as this low pressure system moves off back into the Atlantic Ocean. Now we're going to look at the future precipitation here. And as you can see, there's some snow starting to fall here in Pennsylvania, New York, and just exiting the Ohio Valley. And as I move this model forward, you can see that moisture really work its way out here into the ocean, slowly moving its way up to the north, eventually going to collide with this colder air uh, moving over the Ohio Valley. And that really starts to drop a lot of snow, especially initially here at around 2 a.m. on the 14th or Eastern New York, Vermont, parts of New Hampshire, and just getting started here for Massachusetts and Northern Connecticut. Looking off into the ocean here, you can really see that this low pressure system is strengthening as it makes its way up to the north. Pushing this forward a little bit further into 9 a.m., you can see that that heavy snow is still sticking around kind of in the same parts as that low pressure system approaches and strengthens near the Massachusetts Cape Cod coast area. Pushing this forward into about 3 p.m., on the 14th, you can see that that snow now encompasses pretty much the entire Northeast. You're talking parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Manhattan Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, and most of New York there with a really strong band of snow just off of the coast of Maine, also starting to enter into the Nova Scotia area. Pushing this forward into the late night hours of the 14th, and you can really start to see that low pressure system strengthen here right off of the coast of Massachusetts, and we still have that heavy snow now falling into Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and a little bit here in Connecticut. Also, you're starting to see that snow start to die down here in New York. Pushing this a little bit further, you can really see the swirl of this low pressure system off the east coast with a really heavy band of snow and wind going to be working all along the east coast here with the major impacts being most of eastern Massachusetts into Rhode Island. These will most likely be blizzard conditions and I'm also expecting some power outages. Now we're over here at the National Forecast Database and pushing this model all the way through, you can see the experts are expecting quite a bit of snow up here in the northeast. There's really 
really not a state that escapes out of this six to ten inches of snow as you get closer to Sarah Creek, Cues, and Albany we start to get into those crazy amounts of up to maybe two feet of snow especially around here near Albany further you go south the more that the snow tapers off Philadelphia really mainly just in the northeastern quadrant is going to see some snow up into the eight maybe foot range moving into north new jersey it's kind of the same thing the northern parts are going to get you know anywhere from one to eight inches there the further you get to new york border there manhattan is probably not going to get too much maybe around the one to two inch range going into connecticut you can see we're hovering around two to five inches but then as you get up to the border of massachusetts we're talking maybe up to a foot of snow there as well. Same thing with Rhode Island, about one to two inches further south you go. And then as you move up to the border of Massachusetts, you got about eight to seven inches there. And then in Massachusetts, uh, you guys are looking at around one to two feet in some areas, uh, especially up in the mountainous regions. But then as you get closer to sea level, we're talking about one to two inches. And then as you get closer to the coast, we're talking about six inches tapering off the closer and closer uh, you get to the Cape Cod region. Moving up into New Hampshire, southern New Hampshire is going to be getting the most snow at around a foot to maybe even getting close to two feet in some spots, uh, especially in the mountains. And then as you get further and further north, uh, you start to see that slowly taper off uh, into four to five inches there. And then going into Maine, kind of the same thing as New Hampshire. The further south you go, the more snow you're going to get. So about a foot foot and a half and then the further north you go you start to get to the nines the eights sevens and then as you get to the very northern tip we're talking the least amount of snow for maine with around three to five inches okay last but not least we're going to be looking at the potential for blizzards which is basically just snow and high winds above 35 miles per hour for over three hours so moving this forward you can see that the winds kind of stay calm until this low pressure system really starts to get close to the united states at around 10 a.m on the 14th you can see that we have up to 30 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts happening up here in the mountains maybe even getting up to 60 miles per hour the higher in elevation you go but really it's going to be new york pennsylvania new jersey manhattan uh, parts of Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire and Maine getting a lot of this wind. And we're talking 40 to 50 mile per hour winds just off of the coast. I mean, we're talking almost hurricane force winds hanging around. So if you live near the coastal regions, you're going to be getting the biggest impacts from this wind and expect power outages. And this is definitely going to be classified as a blizzard. All right, that's it for me and my forecast. Thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful day. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and turn on post notifications because I go live all the time covering the national weather.